All right, Alexander, you are on, my brother. I'm going to bring you on. I hope you're ready with uh, camera and mic. And uh, there he is. Right. It's a fella. How are you, bud? Very good. Can you hear me well? Yes, I can. Oh, it's look, and you're, sound, you're soundproof, man. You're good to go. Yes, kind of. It's my little wardrobe uh, like recording studio. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the bedroom uh, recording studio. Perfect. So to say. <laughs> <laughs> and where, 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 are you, where are you living? Where, where are we talking to you from right now? In Berlin, Germany. In Berlin. Okay, cool. So yes. I do have an accent. As Mike, as Mike mentioned. Yeah, I mean, you do, but I'm, I'm used to the, you know, the accent, of course. Good. Well, it's, it's great to meet you. And um, I've been interested in your thread, first of all, for the reasons I said before. I, I, I want to just kind of get to know you and what you're up to, what you're doing. There's also been a little bit of, I don't want to say controversy in this thread, but um, you're getting some pushback on your approach. And I'd love to get your thoughts on um, what you, how you feel about that and, and all that stuff. Because, you know, so often... I can see that you, you, you're a very affable guy. You seem super easy to get along with, but sometimes in text, things come across. N not that anybody thinks you're a dick or anything. It's, mm -hmm. it's just that, um, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to read uh, where people are coming from. So I, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're getting to talk and get to know each other better. Yeah, very good. And also, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for, for giving me the opportunity to get like yeah. live feedback. It's awesome. It's really cool. Good. All right. So this is your, um, you're a freelance copywriter and this is your work with me page and we'll look at it in a second. But, and I know one of your goals uh, from it is, you know, you don't want to deal with unqualified candidates, uh, prospects, which is always smart. Um, so I would like to know, uh, catch me up to where you are in your career and, and who, who has proven to be an ideal client for you so far. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've been a freelancer for, quite a while, um, must have been like 12 years or something, um, mm. including my, my time as a student, which was uh, seven years I was studying for quite a while as well, uh, because I enjoyed it. Um, and I was freelancing, I was getting all these kind of like bad clients, I had all these kind of bad experiences that everyone is going through. Um, I had several um, professions, if you want, I was like a web designer, I was like an occasional writer, um, I was doing something else that was about cleaning households <laughs> just to get out of the house the home office and something like that getting physical so to say um and then i did voiceover actually for quite a while it's part of the reason why i'm here in this kind of setup um uh, eventually until i saw that this voiceover industry is kind of working in a way that i really don't like okay. um so i kind of um, in order to not kill the passion i decided to step away from that um because i was um before that, I was on the, on the border of saying, okay, will I actually go for copywriting or voiceover? Because I know copywriting, like, I, w I grew up in the 90s, right? Uh, I'm 35. Um, so television, I'm like very shaped by television, right? Yeah. Um, so it was always part of me, um, I would say, um, until I really discovered that this is something that I want to do. So that's why I joined like, no, it's two months ago. Um, so I have, I have client experience in different fields, um, different industries, uh, freelancing for a while. And what I'm doing now is I'm only taking, like you said in your introduction, I'm only taking those people that I really want to work with. Like I'm not making this kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm your freelancer. You know, I, I'll do, I'll work on Sundays, you know, I'll work, whatever, whatever, like, you know, it's frustrating. So I want to, um, even if I'm, like positioning myself and the, uh, yeah, like let's say positioning myself on the side, like rather rigid. I prefer to be like that and then soften up, but ha have the barrier high. That's kind yeah. of my approach. Sure. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And um, so who gets over that barrier and you're like, oh, awesome. It worked perfectly. This is the kind of client I want. What does that look like? So um, I have to say it's not a person, like a person is not visiting the site and then, goes through that. My process is the following. Um, so I'm always delivering something upfront, like no strings attached attach value. Um, that's my, my approach. So I wanna like start the conversation with a with present, like, because it's just like, first of all, it's different and not many people do that. It's a lot of effort and um, it's kind of a way to stand out. So I will approach them. I will share something with them. I will say, okay, I had a look, I did a little research on your, on your company, on your product, on your service. And this is what I found out. And I made this for you. Use it. 
get it. Okay, so I, yes. I want to clarify something there. Yeah. How have they qualified to get that attention from you to that point? I, I like their product or service. Me, so you found it cold and you cold outreach something, you gifted them some of your, yes. your, your wisdom. Okay. That is my, that is my um, ideal approach. Okay. Um, and then I would uh, tell them, okay, well, so I would never do like this real hardcore cold approach where I say, uh, you know, I have this service, I'm a copywriter, I'm a, I do email copywriting, right? A specialization. Um, but, but I would never say, okay, yeah, you know, you can hire me for, for this and that. Like, that's not my approach. So if they then decide after I've given them value, which I think is valuable for them and for their business, they would go to my website. And then the investment they would have to do is read through that page. Because although it sounds weird, maybe, and to some people it's like, how can, how can you do that? Um, this is like, for me, it's like, it's important that people understand where, where I am. Like, even, even if I'm sharing a little bit of my story and it maybe can be like boring or whatever, but for me, it's very important that they understand this is, this is the person that they're going to work for a while because I'm always interested in long-term, you know? Sure, right. Um, you know. Yeah, you're, 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 you're self-selecting and pre, pre-qualified uh, folks. I mean, I think it's, it's, it is a novel approach. It's, it's smart in a lot of ways. My, own, my big question is, how do you know they want to work with a copywriter and are willing to invest? What, what are your indica- indications of that that you've seen in their, their marketing? That's just uh, intuition, having a hunch, like just a feeling. Like I had this, I had a cold approach actually when I was still a designer. Um, I was telling, hey, I really like what you're doing and I want to work with you. I just said it like that. That, that was the email. And we ended up working together and I had my best paid design job. Um, you know, so I know it works and I know I can be, I have, I have good energy. I can be enthusiastic if I really like something yeah. and I can deliver that through my words. Um, yeah. You know, so that's, that's just my approach. So I'm, I'm, yeah, what's mm-hmm. the success rate with this approach for you? So, um, I, just for context, um, I had a, like a, it's not like a retainer client. It was more like a day job client that I had. So I did like these kind of, kind of boring tasks. It was customer service. It was fine. It was good. It was okay. It, it was like a day job, but I was freelancing. So I've been doing that for the past three weeks until, uh, two weeks ago until we said, okay, we, we, I don't want to work. Uh, let's not continue, whatever. So I had built up this kind of, um, I don't know, like some money, some saved money and so on. So what I'm doing now, because I know this approach is very different and it's not like a fast success rate. This is more like, okay, long-term. Yeah. This is really long-term. Yeah, you're, you're, right? you're, as my friend um, Doberman Dan would say, you, you know, you're, you're hunting whales. Yeah, uh, essentially, yeah, uh, like you, you want whale clients who you can ultimately partner with, and there are they're they're already doing great stuff, and you see ways that you can come in and enhance it, and you want to start a relationship that should progress into you making really great money for and with that client. Exactly. So my 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 mantra is always saying uh, it's always value over money because money will always follow. Money will always follow. And I have a prospective client. I, have to, I can say that. Um, prospective client. We haven't signed anything at the moment. They received something from you, uh, from me. Um, they got like an, like an about page and they really liked it. And I gave them an SEO strategy as well because I said, okay, I'm just going to give it to them because bonus is always nice for people and it was valuable for them. Yeah. So okay. we will see how, how, how good they are. But yeah. I have, for, for now, it looks good, like chemistry wise. And uh, I'm, I like supporting startups. They are a startup in this case from Berlin. Yep. Um, and I'm, I'm really into this kind of independent makers. That's very important for me. Like people, like small, small coffee corner shops, so to say, but for the, in the internet, so to say. That's kind of- Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. All right. I love all this. Um, yep. I love that you helped me understand where you're coming from. I'm going to mm-hmm. just- I'm going to, I'm going to counter that with my, my philosophy and, and see if it's helpful. And because okay. the thing I see about it, I'm not saying it's wrong. Like, you know, um, I, I love a, a lot of what you're doing. You, you're by the way, you're screening and you're starting with who you want to work with. That, that is so key, man. Critical mm-hmm. because look, if we're going to do that, like you said, Hey, we're freelancers. If the gig is right and the money's right and the and the and the situation warrants it, I'll I'll work Sunday. I'll give up a weekend. I'll give up a party. I'll meet your deadline. I'll I'm I'll go all in. But I, 
you better be somebody I like and can get behind. And I want to be surrounded by people I'm inspired by, not slaving it out. Why is Helen still up there with the light on in the office when we're all at the bar? You know, what's the point there, right? So, sorry, Helen, I don't mean to offend uh, whoever Helen is. <laughs> I picked Helen. Um, but um, uh, here's what I would say. M my counter to that would be, that's awesome. But another approach would be you take this avatar based upon the, the, the companies you see uh, and what you like about what they're doing. And sure, you can cold approach them. But at the same time, Alexander, and I, maybe you're doing this already. I don't know. You use the, the, the um, study you're doing of their stuff. You do breakdowns. You teach what you see in those companies in their marketing what is an indie maker why do you like that why does it matter why do you champion them and your this is now you're creating what i call a, a bat signal mm -hmm. and you're saying this is who i am and this is what i stand for and this is who i want to work with and you're create you're building an audience for that and you're educating your peers other copywriters other you know business owners on that you're the guy for the, for that avatar right mm -hmm. And, and you're passionate and people feel that. And, and, and then suddenly what happens is those same businesses that you're cold calling now are coming to you and going, Alexander, man, I, I, I saw that video you made. I saw the breakdown. I couldn't agree more. You know exactly what we're trying to do. We just don't know how to get there yet. Can you help us? Mm -hmm. And now suddenly you're, you're sitting back and having an influx of leads come at you and you're getting to pick and choose, put them through a filter from there. So to me, the difference is, I don't know, whatever fishing analogy would be like you standing and having a school of fish just come at you and you grabbing your dinner for the next month, or you sitting there with a pole in the water uh, because you heard that's a, that's a good spot, you know? Yes, you very good. Um, so it's like basically inbound marketing, right? Exactly, uh, 100%. Inbound yes. versus outbound, if, if you want to break it down that way, right? Exactly. Um, and I, it's, it's, so I'm, I'm doing landing page analysis, uh, which is funny because now I get critiqued my, my own page, which, which is uh, it's interesting. <laughs> so I do, do these analysis and um, this is also long term, right? So that's for free. It's, they don't pay anything for that. And out of that, like speaking of success rate, because you asked, um, out of 12, and 150 hours of working, like this is a lot of work, like analysis can be, because I write it all down. I had one person asking specifically for another, another landing page, paid in this case. So I know the strategy, like th this is ideal, of course, what you're saying is, is ideal. I want people to come to me, uh, but, I'm, but, but I like this kind of approach of saying, uh, and I will probably do like a mixture of it in, in the future. Mm -hmm. But for now, I really like, like, okay, I, I really, I like your, I like your company. I like your product. And this is what I get. It's kind of, it is, it is not super cold, like, because you already offer something instead of, yeah. I, I have nothing. I'm just here. I have my service. Work with yeah. But, 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 but the, the, to me, the cold part of it is you have no idea what's going on in their world. They haven't mm -hmm. raised their hand in any way for help with copy or indicated yeah. in any way that they would see the value in having uh, an optimized version that you could offer. I'm sure they'd be dazzled by your free gift, Yeah. but so many other factors play into them deciding to exchange money with you for that service that, and, and them really appreciating that, that that's where outbound becomes, you know, man, like really a risky proposition. True. True. I agree with that. Um, I think one of the, 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 the strategies or tactics that I'm using is who's looking for people like, you know, just job boards. And if they, Oh, they're looking for a copywriter. I don't want to apply directly, but I use the, what they, they were saying, okay, we're looking for someone who's doing that and that and that. And then I'm maybe subscribing to the newsletter, you know, what I learned in the escape velocity uh, program and so on. Um, right. Getting into their world, even if it takes like weeks and months, I don't care really. Um, and then I can say, well, I know you're looking for this writer, marketing, email marketing person, whatever. I'm your guy and here's my gift for you. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, man. Um, right. I, I won't fight you on it because I, like I said, I love so much of what you're doing. And I know in, in, in Escape Velocity, we, 
I touched on authority content a little bit. I, I feel like mm-hmm. if and when you come through RFL, I think maybe you'll see, oh, I'm already doing this work. Now I need to promote my work and show, let, other, let, let a bigger audience see that you're doing this work for free for people. Not that you're doing it for free, that let them see the work, right? Yep. By the way, we just so happen to have, um, it's funny, we talked earlier about how did I find copywriting. Uh, Chris Tomasulo is the guy who introduced me to copywriting years ago. He's been a, a longtime friend. And one of the most valuable lessons I learned from uh, working with Chris was the, the difference between inbound and outbound. And I know you know this, but I, I'm, I'm compelled to repeat it because Chris is here. Um, it, it was staggering to me because we worked in a company that had a, a, a phone, a telemarketing team, okay? And they spent all day, as all telemarketing companies do, cold calling, cold calling, cold calling, cold calling, trying to get uh, any, any kind of call to come in. And, and, and when they would get a call to come in, they'd, get, they'd have fronters who would say, sure, let me get you over to somebody right away. And they'd begin the, the high pressure sales process. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, uh, put, put an ad in the paper. And I don't remember what, what the ad said exactly, but it was, it was very compelling. It was Dean Jack- Jackson-esque before I think Dean even started teaching this, where it was basically like a nine word uh, email type of ad in, in a, a, just a classified ad in a paper. Mm-hmm. And the phone would, would ring, people would be compelled to call and find about, out about this. And then the, the, the key was, he would have the, per, he would only two or three closers were allowed to take those calls because he had educated on them and on how this is a totally different way to sell, right? And the, the call would go right to Chris, only he could take that inbound call. And the first time I heard Chris take a, a call like that and say to the person, um, okay, uh, yeah, and ask him a, a couple quick questions. He's like, we may be able to help you. Um, you know what? Okay, I'm going to take down your number and I'm going to put you with, um, you know, um, Darren. And, uh, oh, actually, you know what? I, I, I'm pretty sure I just saw him walk in a couple minutes early. Will you, may I put you on hold for a second? Let me see if he's willing to take the call. If not, you know, okay, sure. And they're sitting there and then he put them on hold and he'd sit there. Darren's across the room and I'm going, dude, like it's a lead. You need to get it. And he's like, no, man, like they're right now, like hopeful. Uh-huh. They're in, in, engaged in this process. And, and he would, he's just cool. He's like, okay, yeah, actually Darren's uh, able to take, and then he puts him through. And it was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? When you spend all this time only focused on trying to grab whatever's out there and you sit back and just like, yeah, come to me. And <laughs> it was staggering for me to see the, the difference in that, you know? And so to me, that's the philosophy we all want as freelancers. If like you are, you're passionate and you're confident and you know you can help a certain kind of company, man, like reaching out to them one at a time to let them know feels like a disservice to you and to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I have to say I'm, I'm pretty b- bad at marketing myself. Like, I don't, I don't want to be like too much in the public. I just, I just do stuff like behind the scenes. I like doing that. It's, it's weird. It's kind of like you, you want to be known, but you don't want to be too known, right? This, that's at least that's my, my little Well, thing. I think, I think probably what it is after working with many, many, many freelancers. Um, is, you go by Alex at all or is it always Alex? Yeah, Alex. Please, Alex. Yeah. Okay. Alexander's too oh. formal. Okay. Um, I think what it is, is you're naturally intimidated by, um, for a few reasons, to step out into the spotlight. And, and I totally get that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, but in a, a big part of it is one of the hardest things when we're coaching people in RFL about choosing a specialty is they get very, they feel like they're putting their lives on display for the whole world and that there's no going back. And if I, Oh my God, what if I wake up and change my mind? Everybody's going to know me as this thing. And it's just simply not true. Right. Um, Nobody's paying that close attention. It takes a little bit of time and repetition and you can make your specialty sort of, you know, general enough to where it fits into your wheelhouse. What's important more than anything, more than nailing the exact wording or how to frame your specialty is, do pe- are people hearing from you enough 
to, to know who you are, to resonate, to understand your philosophy a little bit. Look mm -hmm. at Chris Orzakowski, for instance, you know, mm -hmm. two years ago, this guy's a, a, a high school teacher and yeah, he's writing good copy for some good clients, but totally behind the scenes, he comes out and Chris only has one way of showing up and that's by kicking the damn door down <laughs> at a big personality. Right. Um, and, but you know, now everybody knows who Chris is. They know he's an email marketing, um, specialist, you know, he is known and it's not that he, because he said, Hey, I'm Chris Orzakowski, email marketing specialist. Every time he came on camera, he teaches and he breaks it down and you can see his passion behind it. And when you learn from somebody a better way to, for a, a certain type of person to do a certain thing, they automatically think you're the best, most qualified person to solve their problem. Mm -hmm. And so I would want you just teaching, man, and not even worrying about if it's perfect or, or the message is on point. Just get out there and do Alex and teach. And man, you'd be surprised that a lot of these exact people that you've been manifesting one-on-one -on -one will start to just come into your life and you'll be reaching companies you never heard of or would have even come across because they're mm -hmm. finding you and that creates the bigger opportunity. Sure. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Very good. All right. All right. So we didn't look at your page. <laughs> <laughs> well, good that anyway. help, uh, and I'm happy to do that if you still want, but yeah, the, sure. Okay. The, the thing I'd say about the page, uh, let me get it up here real quick. Just one second. <clears throat> um, do, 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 do. I'm sure that people are going crazy in the comments. We have so many um, very smart people upon this topic, and I'm hogging you all to myself here. Um, but I want to get onto the the page itself. Okay. And so I know some of the stuff you've, you've been hearing already, Alex, and, and I would agree. Uh, it's very long and immersive and it's very, um, really goes into depth explaining your criteria and how you work with clients. And just as a, as a quick starting point, to me, it, it, it's almost a little like, and I get that you don't, you've done some dating already, right? You, you, you say you've given them this gift. They should be super interested in working with you. But so far that's been all really positive, right? Wow. You make the dinner table. They go, this guy, Alex loves our marketing. He likes the kind of company we are. And he gave us this, look at this. I wonder what it'd be like to work with him. And then they get to this page and then there's like all, it's, it's not so much negative. It's just that there's all these rules things you will do and won't do and who you'll do it with and people you have no interest in. And it's, it's almost sort of like, uh, right. So I, I think I always equate it to dating and it feels a little like, okay, you've had some kind of, maybe you were introduced by friends. You had a nice conversation. You asked this person out, they agree to go out with you. You have a couple of nice phone conversations. Then you get to dinner. And the first thing you do is sit down and you lay out a contract <laughs> and you say, now, before we order, let's go over some, <laughs> some rules to how we're going to do this. You know what I'm saying? That, it feels a little like that to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, can I just uh, add, because what you're seeing there is the old version. I made a revision, oh, okay. um, right? So if you scroll bit down, I think you can, because it actually got longer. Uh, I think it's <laughs> it even worse than <laughs> <laughs> it got longer, yes, um, because it's like it's kind of also iterating in public. Uh, I have to say because I'm not yeah. actively, I'm not super promoting the page, right? Sure. Um, it's more like I'm just a, like basically there's email conversations or just a phone call. I'm saying, okay, this is the page where I have to go where you can see my process. Right. Um, and you could also say it's it's fair, like it's it's f totally fair to say that and to to see it that way. Um, it's kind of it's kind of like a contract. It's it's kind of like terms and conditions but put into like nicer words and not call it uh, a terms and conditions, so to say. Um, but yeah, it's, it's rather long. I'm, I'm totally aware of that. Yeah. Um, but if people take this step and really cross this barrier, then I know that's the right client. Right. No doubt about it, man. They've crawled over glass to, to, <laughs> to be in your world. Again, my, I'm always about momentum though, man. I always sure. want to see energy and I, mm -hmm. I think you'll learn so much from a couple of clients who felt like a good fit, but maybe weren't like you, you've been doing this a long time, dude, you know, you can live through 
a couple less than ideal situations. You just have to be smart about the contract and the agreement and not, you know, um, but this just feels like a, a really high barrier for people to cross. And I doesn't, it still doesn't guarantee that it's going to go perfectly. Yeah. I'm aware of that. Yes. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe the solution to that is just create like a punchier, shorter, a 250 words page. I don't know, something like that. I think, it, I think, man, you're, it's, it, it's, again, it's the phone call. You're, you're very willing to, to communicate with people. And to me, mm -hmm. communication is everything. You can mm -hmm. hear by the questions you ask them and the answers you give where the red flags might be. And then you can take some of that knowledge and put it into the agreement and spell certain things out carefully. For instance, you'll know within one phone call, if, so let's say you've done the free thing, they love it. They, they say, let's get on the phone and talk about how we work together. You hear what they, they have to say. You don't have to give them a price and all that on that call. You say, okay, I got all of my information. I'm going to send you a proposal. Now you can tell that this person is super needy and is going to want a, a lot of hold handing, a uh, hand holding. And so you add in there very specific times about when I'm available to respond to your questions. Uh, how many calls a week or a month will have during this part. You know what I mean? Like you can, and, re and so now you're customizing the experience to protect yourself from all these things you have listed, but you don't have to freak people out before you even get some momentum together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I will just, I'll test out. I mean, it's, it's experimental, uh, you know, it's experiential as well, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to a degree. Um, yeah. We'll see. Um, maybe I'll, uh, because of what I'm doing now is I have this page and then there's the questionnaire and the questionnaire, like after filling out the question, it's at the bottom of the page. Um, I'm actually deciding whether this person, because there are some questions that you ask where, you know, Oh, if the person answers this way, you know, no red flag. Right. So I have right. basically these two steps at the very least, the long page, which yeah. probably I could be shortened. Um, and then the questionnaire, which is like more like precise towards, uh, email marketing, right? And the, the business, exactly. say. And then the, depending on their answers, I, I tell them, okay, we can work or I find someone else or I won't even reply. And they know that. I always, always write down uh, what they can expect. So it's always clear. like, I want to be very crystal clear. Like, and I think it's because I don't see that that often. And maybe there's a reason for that. Like someone is actually saying, this is, this is how it work. Like, exactly. Like, he, this is what you can expect. And I think if I have someone, a professional coming to me and saying, the, this is, these are the next five to 10 steps. Oh, wow. He really knows what he's doing and he really has a plan. Like, yeah, right? he's not sure a lost that. freelancer. One of those, you know? <laughs> yeah. But what's in here is a whole lot of other stuff too. Yeah. And I think all the, look, what's in it for me, you know, this man, they're, they're just wanting to see the benefits of it. Right. Not, sure. not all the, all right. I got to bring Abby on. I, I feel she is going crazy. I promise. Uh, Abby's one of the, um, the best people in the world you'll ever meet to help a freelancer do better business. And so uh, I got to let Abby on to um, share her thoughts. Hey, I'm hey. in my bedroom office today too, so, there you go, nice. which is, which is <laughs> odd for me, but you know me so well, I was going crazy. I was just texting Chris actually. I'm like, I'm going crazy. Kevin hasn't brought me on. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, I love, like, you have to read the chat, too, because Angie has a lot of really great things to say in the chat after the call. Um, I love, like, what Kevin said, so much of what you're doing on this page. Um, I think you're combining two strategies um, that work really well, but might not work together. So this huge, long, like, filtering process is great if you have so many leads coming in that you just, like, don't want to have calls with all of them uh to and then you want to like i only want the most serious people um going through this but at the same time so if to take the dating analogy again if somebody asked me out for a drink which is what basically you do when you when you do an outreach to somebody like you're asking them out at this point and so you're asking them out and then they say yes yeah, awesome cool like where are we going to go to eat and then you like spring these rules on them. It kind of feels like almost like a bait and like, oh, you reached out to me, you know? Um, and so you're already doing the filter by choosing which companies that you're reaching out to. I think a way better approach, which is again, what Kevin said, but you're already doing this work. You're doing these landing page analysis. You're doing, like you said, 120 hours worth of work. 
what if you just publish that stuff? It's not about it's like public. Yeah, it's not about mm -hmm. having to market all these things. It's you're building your authority. That's why a page like this works for Chris. Chris has a similar page that's like all these different like rules. Well, Chris mm -hmm. has so many leads and he rarely works one on one with people because mm -hmm. he does all this teaching and he has just people inbound and he's like, hey, just go over here and it, there's a filtering step. But if you're doing outbound and then giving them an inbound application, it's a little bit confusing for the client. But I love what you said about the boundaries. Like I'm somebody, I write about that all the time about like, you need to set the boundaries. That's how you build your authority to say mm -hmm. exactly what you said of, right. this makes them feel like, oh my God, he knows what I'm doing. But that happens after the prospect call or during the prospect call where you're like, hey, and it happens step by step. So it's, it's hey, here's how to work with me. One, two, three, four, five, fairly simple. And then yeah, let's do it. Okay, here's the pricing. You're qualified them as a lead. You talk to them. Then, okay, here's the proposal. And then here's the long list of rules are in the proposal so that yeah. that just gets everybody on the same page. And then you're setting just kind of micro filters. But I think you're like putting a big wall in front of them before they even work with you instead of like making them take little steps. I'm a big believer in like, yes, like make them take steps before they, before they work with you. But mm -hmm. like they can't jump over the wall. They have to take the steps. Right. Meaning, meaning they won't. They won't have the energy to jump over the wall in most cases. Right. Because there's, there especially with the cold outreach stuff. Like with the, you don't even know if they want a copywriter. You don't even know if right. if they're in the place to hiring. So you're like, I don't. You're making all these assumptions, and then you're putting a wall in front of them. It, so. it, it, it's almost like an MLM thing. Um, I'm not equating your business model to that. I'm just saying in the, in the way those propositions go down, it's like, Hey, Oh, need to wash your hands. Try this new soap. I love the way it smells. And they go, Oh my God, that does smell good. It's crazy. Like, how would you like to make money selling that soap? And you're like, ah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then here, I need a thousand dollars. Like for your starter <laughs> kit, just, you know, it's like, right here. And yeah, it's like, Holy cow. It's a lot up front, but I love, I think you've got a lot of good pieces like in place. I'm like, I'm really excited to see what you do with all this because like the fact that you're doing these landing page analysis, like, yeah. that's authority content right, right. there. That's like, exactly. It's the work you're already doing. I think people right. get scared of marketing because they're like, well, I don't want to write a big sales page or I don't want to like be out there like, hey, you know, but it's just doing what you already do. And so just take what you are emailing people and put it on a blog or put it on your, you know, Facebook page or on YouTube or whatever. And then you can share it. And like Kevin said, instead of reaching people one on one, you're, if you tag the companies, I know Chris actually got a client because he tagged them in an right. analysis they said he did of one of their ads. You tag the companies, they're seeing it. And then plus all these other companies that are in that same niche, if right. you're tagging them on social are going to say, Oh, like I'm in that same thing. Like maybe I can learn something from exactly. this. Um, if he can do it for work. him, he can do it for, for, for me. Exactly. And then That's, you get those inbound leads. Go ahead, Alex. I, I know you want to tell, so maybe you're doing this already. Uh, yeah. Like, like two things. First, um, like I'm not doing really cold outreaching. Like it's always like I'm always delivering. I'm not these kind of sleazy, you know. No, 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 no. We, we, we don't. Like, we don't think that at all. No, it's, right? yeah. But it's but it but sounded what like. What we mean it, by cold is like they they didn't know you before you reached out to them. Is all right. we mean by. Cold. Okay. Okay. Yep. And I, I still think it's a, it's different when you say I have something for you and I I made up my mind and I spent a few hours with your with your thing with whatever the person is offering or company is offering. I think it's still uh, still different, and I'm never saying now you can work with me. It's always like it always depends on their reaction. If I don't see a, a reaction, if they say, "Oh, that's so nice of you," then I know okay, it's not gonna gonna end up in something. But if I if, I, if there's something where I see, oh, actually we were looking for someone like you, and actually with this pers perspective client that I mentioned, they've been longing uh, looking for for a copywriter or an SEO texter um, for two months. Right. And so, I mean, they were kind of like in a desperate uh, position, which is why they really liked my approach, like being like, okay, this is how I work and so on. And um, what you said about like promoting and all that, I know I'm not doing that enough. Uh, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm shy about that. Um, but what worked so far on Twitter, for example, I made this analysis and I got feedback from this, this company. It's a hosting company in, in Germany, whatever. And uh, they were saying, yeah, you know, um, they thought I had like creepy intentions, like, oh, I want to get into your business and do creepy stuff. But then I told them, this is my, this is my motivation. And then they said they totally switched and they said, okay, what can, what can we do for you? 
So they gave me a shout out on Twitter. And the result of that was further leads, like ask people asking for landing page analysis. It's still free. And I did like five of them or six of them. A lot of time. I don't really care because I know it's kind of this authority building up and kind of it's a very long-term thing. And if you, um, if you check this, the site, uh, or it doesn't really matter if you, do, if you don't, uh, I'm doing 100 free analysis. That's how my strategy, my like 10X kind of strategy saying, okay, um, at the end, I don't know, maybe in two years or three years, I'll be done with 100 uh, analysis. And then I will say, okay, well, I can go out now. Well, I should probably do that earlier. I can say I did free analysis. Boom, there, there's my massive kind of portfolio, if you want. And uh, I build up uh, momentum with a few companies, with a few individuals maybe, and kind of like people know, people know I'm not, I'm not like a, a weirdo. I'm not like, I'm no. not doing scam stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm a bootstrapper, yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, and I'm like you, but, and I know the struggle and so on. So I'm, I'm just in your position. Sure, but man. I have, I, I, you know, we're all saying the same thing here, Alex, yeah. really, all three of us, right? Okay. It, it's just that, uh, Rachel had a great analogy. It's like you're you're dangling a carrot, and now you want to add a carrot stand on the side of the road so that every everybody on the highway driving by can go, "Hey, hey, carrots! Look at that! I want a carrot." <laughs> it's it's you know, and so uh, yeah, doing the hundred thing, man. Like you know, have a are you driving people towards that project? Watch me do a hundred analysis. Surely one of these businesses is like yours or one of these problems is a problem you have. So it's free to join me as I, as I dispel my, my marketing and copywriting wisdom on these unsuspecting businesses and, and, and drop a, a lovely gift in their life, right? That's exactly and, what Justin Blackman did with his headline project. Yeah, 100 headlines now, in 100 days. Yeah. And now he uses that to your point of how you said now you have this big portfolio. Justin now uses this he has this phrase and I can't remember the number exactly, but it's like, I wrote copy for 384 clients in 2018. Like that's a phrase that he uses. He just had, it was on David Garfinkel's podcast and it was like, because he had that, but he was constantly, as he was doing it every single day, driving people to like, Hey, check out what I'm doing, check out what I'm doing. And I have nothing against cold outreach. I haven't done it. Um, and I, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a negative thing. Uh, we just hired actually one of the clients that I'm working with. We just hired somebody for $7,000 a month on a cold email that they sent us. So uh, I don't have like, I've never done it, but I I know that it works. I just feel like there's, there's a cold outreach strategy and then there's an inbound lead strategy. And um, I think they're two separate ways to look at how you work with, but they can also work hand in hand because again, the thing that matters the most to me here, Alex, is that you are acting on your passion and you are, uh, you know, fulfilling your motivation to help the kind of companies you want to work with and champion. And that, to me, is the, the core of all this, right? Mm-hmm. And to me, that from that point on, uh, you know, add into that, that you're qualified to do this, you have this expertise, all those things add up to you being a guy more people should know about and want to hire. And mm-hmm. so, it's the only part that, that gets me about it is that the only way people can find out now for the most part is if you happen to reach out to them. I, I, I want to I shout this to the world, essentially, that you're doing this and you should, you, should, uh, you know, um, bear the, the fruits of, that, of all that effort. That's all, man. True. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good, good last okay. words. <laughs> all right. Let's end it there. Thank you, Abby. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Alex, man, this was really fun. I appreciate it. It was, and let's keep going. Let's see how this evolves. Okay. Yes, sure. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.